Hey everybody, this is um, a redo of Mark of Kalth. Uh, I was reading a story in it, which I liked, and by Aaron Dimsky Brown, my favorite black library author. Favorite, yes, even beating Dan Abnett, which I'm sorry, can't write Space Marines to save his life. And if you don't believe me, go watch that abortion called space marine movie and ask me if those were astartes <clears throat> sorry that was a little mini rant there uh anyways i'm going to reread this because the first time i read it it was late at night it was the first time me reading the story myself and i i wasn't in my normal place <clears throat> and uh uh well never mind it sucked that's my rating of myself. So I'm going to reread it again. We are supposed to know no fear. These are not just words. To know no fear is the core of the bioalchemical secret, worming its way through the invisible threads of our genetics. We are born to fight and die, never knowing fear. We understand it. We endure it. We conquer it. But we never suffer it, and thus we never know its true taste. Fear is nothing more than a biological reaction, a physiological curiosity that affects lesser beings, beings with various degrees of cognitive impairment. This is merely the first step. First one must know no fear. Next comes the conviction of courage, giving one's life to the absolute purity of purpose. To rise into the ranks of the legions Astartes means casting all else aside. Your family is dead. Your youth is meaningless. As far as the galaxy is concerned, you were never born. You forfeit any lingering pretensions of humanity. One warrior is nothing. The legion is everything. You must live by that code. You have to embody those words and ensure every indrawn breath is devoted to making them true. As a space marine, you are no longer human. You are a legionary, beyond the concerns of mortality and into the genetic purity of the transhuman. You stand clad in your legion's colors, carry your legion's symbol, and serve your legion's lord. You wield weapons forged in your legion's foundry fires. You live and breathe and sweat your legion's culture, drawn from your legion's homeworld, manifested in your legion's traditions and rituals. Above the legionary is the squad, the pack, the claw, the unit, the cell. Above the squad is only the legion. This is strength. This is duty. Duty must blunt all other emotion. The legions are weapons, nothing more. Warriors forged for fire, no different from a plowshare melted down to become a sword. Swords know no fear and feel no emotion. They do not pine for the days of tilling the soil in peaceful fields, nor do they break before the first, first blow is ever even struck. The legions and the once humans that make up their ranks are the same. But the human mind is never a clean slate. Even taking a child's mind before the realities of life teach a man to settle to compromise, and to know his limits. A wealth of lore already colors the mind's canvas. We are not mindless weapons. And a divorce from humanity does not mean we are wholly inhuman. Humanity is our foundation. A limitation to be built upon. Therein lies the perfect strength of the legionary's form and function. The emperor, for all his ignorance, got that much right. We are the weapons of the human race needed to lay claim to the stars. Neither human nor inhuman, but something between both. Transhuman.
or post-human, as some scribes say. Perhaps once human is closer to the truth. However, as with anything touched by humans, the process is not without flaw. Some minds resist the ascension from boy to legionary, and some things are carved too deep to simply be planed away while forging the psyche of the perfect soldier. Sometimes too much of the man remains inside the soldier. These are the unlucky, the flawed, the chafe that falls from the wheat, imperfect cogs in the perfect war machine. Most never last long enough to stand clad in ceramite at all, let alone march between, beneath the Imperium's banners. The legions are brutal flesh factories, and their trials call the weak from the strong. To be a legion's Astartes, you must know no fear and live a life of absolute duty to a greater ideal. Perhaps, in the future, there will be some refinement or alteration of the process, something that steals the underlying humanity that forms our foundation. If so, I would not envy the diminished generations that follow us. For now, there is no sure way to murder the human spirit at the heart of every warrior. Only a fool would do so. But I am not certain the lords of every legion would agree with me. Handwritten Treatise, Author Unknown Out of ammunition and out of luck. Karotal knew he had finally reached safety when he found the firelight. The light of a humble wreckage fire caught the silhouettes of living and dead, painting their shadows across the cave walls. The humans were hunched, spindly things, thinned by malnutrition, bent over by wounds and weariness. Most were ravaged by radiation burns long before they made it down into the tunnels, and they bore the mark of Kalf, written in pain across their deteriorating flesh. Their shadows were careless marionettes, stunted and graceless as they danced across the stone walls. Kaurutal's own image, a towering warrior with a helm crested by twin horns, showed a stark, dark grandeur that he no longer felt. His shadowy avatar displayed none of his armor's battle damage, nor any of the weariness that sank through his body to the bone. The connection feed sockets running up his spine were aching drill holes that cried out for tending. The same feeds along his shoulders and chest where his armor linked to his gene-enhanced physique were punctures in his flesh, pulling raw with every movement. He knew exactly how long he'd been here. He knew it despite the fact he lived in a world with neither day nor night because his eye lenses, runic displays, kept track of every hour, every minute, every second he spent down here in the dark. He had lost his own bolter six years and 246 days ago. In that time, he had carried another 13 bolters, looting them from the fallen and inevitably losing them again when the fighting was at its most savage. For several moments, he watched the shadow play performance sliding over the ancient rock. His own image mocked him as it flickered against the cavern wall, winged, horned, the sight his enemy saw the sight his enemies had seen for almost seven years. And that's the beginning. I'm going to be keeping these down to 10 minutes because I like 10 minutes. And I hope this was a much better reading than the last one. And let me know. I'll keep going. See you next time.